There's no time. Hey, here we are. It's yeah. Friday night, everybody. Yeah. Holy shit. Everybody got your fucking drinks and snacks and I know everybody's in there already talking. Bees Nest is in there. Bees Nest is uh my boy's he works in Mexico, so he's crossing the border in Tijuana all the time. I love that yeah. uh I love that shirt you sent by the way. Yeah, he sent Jenny a shirt. I guess because I wore it like last week, yeah. but I don't know if you saw it or not. He'll send me down. <laughs> he's in there saying he came off a three day bender in the damn hotels with the girls. He's got pictures to prove too. He's not fucking around. <laughs> He'll send, and I haven't been saying anything about it. I don't, I don't know, you know, fucking how how much he wants to keep the shit on the down low. But he'll send me, <laughs> send me on fucking, he'll send me on fucking messenger and shit videos of fucking going in and down fucking. I don't want to call it a brothel. Just plays with a bunch of girls fucking waiting around to do business. But he's like, should I get that one? I'm gonna get this one. I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get that one. I'm get, yeah, I'm like yeah, get that one. <laughs> I was giving advice. I'm just going to say, just a pro tip, if you want to keep anything on the download, don't tell Tom about it. Well, well if he tells me in fucking messages, and, you know, he's talking about it in public, then I guess I guess he's not, you know, he's not trying to. Well, that's it. what I was going to say. It's not like he's trying to hide it because he did post right. about it on YouTube. He's got right? pictures to prove and he's showing me. Right. So it's like, obviously, yeah. he's not going to be bothered if we no. mention it. I'm sure more people will see it on his YouTube yeah. channel that will see this anyway. <laughs> Fuck it. Business says, uh, I have receipts. <laughs> you got receipts. Yeah. Well, that's Sorry, good. Man, you, I... you need that shit for, like, yeah. you know, for tax purposes. I'm in a relationship. I can't fuck around. <laughs> <laughs> Why? So, is somebody asking you to? No. I'm just... <laughs> but it's kind of like, you know what I mean? Come on down, man. Come on down. I'll take you. Come on, man. Let's, let's have fun. In the chat. Like All that. the hookers. Yeah. Yeah. You know. You know how it is. It's guys. You guys stuff guy stuff it still counts though see that's still cheating it is yeah it's still cheating some people might not think so but there's like you know there's there's that kind of there's now, that uh, there's that whole line where like some people kind of yeah i don't know it's a whole spectrum of like what now if jenny goes in on it with me she's fucking you know what i mean she's fucking we're going 50 50 she gets one and i get the other that's not necessarily not necessarily cheating. well but no i it's, think that's not that's not that's not jenny's type though that's not jenny's type yeah yeah, it, no. yeah. you gotta pay she jenny's not interested yeah, that's like, yeah. I just, come on now. She, I can get she, that shit for she, free. She's got her own prowess. She's got her own prowess. She's do that. Yeah. Oh, my God. It's emotional. emotional. <laughs> Women, it's emotional. Emotion. Well, you know, like I'm saying, yeah. you gotta like like the person because I yeah, think yeah. we were we were talking about this. I mean, I was pretty wasted on the Wednesday show, but I think we were talking about, um, unless I just thought it, I think we were talking about how. Um, dudes like if you don't like a girl but she's yeah. hot you can still fuck her and oh it's yeah okay yeah a lot of i don't know if this is true i'm sure it's not true of all women because nothing is yeah but i can't really like if i don't like a dude it doesn't really matter what he looks like i still just i can't get into yeah. it i can't get into it you know what i mean it's it yeah. he could be like the hottest dude in the world but it's just kind of like if i don't like him as a person it's just not it's far easier to have sex with a woman who's attractive and you don't like than a woman you like and who isn't attractive Mm. If she's not attractive, you just, it's just not going to happen. <laughs> it's just, it's because, you know, our, our our system is so kind of primitive. It's all visual, you know. So it doesn't matter. It's more about how they look. Yeah. Yeah. But that doesn't, that's not, doesn't have anything to do with the relationship, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Because I guess we just kind of evolved to be able to fucking procreate with females that we don't have relationships with. Yeah, it's like I'm going to impregnate that one. And yeah, that yeah, one, right. And that yeah. One and that yeah. One. I'm going to impregnate just, all of them. It's pure biology. It's like something fish do. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> or frogs. I'm going to spray my feet yeah, yeah. all over the ocean. <laughs> yeah. Hey, you stay here. Y'all stay here. I'm going to go over there. I'm going to let it all out. And it's going to fall on y'all. All right. And y'all going to get pregnant. Just wait. Hold on. And my boy's going to be next to me doing the same thing. So it's going to be both of us together getting all y'all pregnant. It's going to be some shit like that. It's just weird. Weird like, shit. Well, I didn't know it was supposed to rain today. Like, Ew. What? <laughs> Little frogs and shit. Yeah. I just had like a really, really funny like mental picture. 
Yeah. Of you as kind of like a fish, or of you yeah. also like spraying. You like spray frog. Man, stop. You know. That's gross. And shit. It is gross. Well, hey, you started it. See who's in here. Oh, Let's suddenly it's gross. Yeah, no, yeah, I, I got it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's just comedic timing. <laughs> Okay, see what everybody... Fourth drawer down says, not in my pool. Yeah, right. <laughs> got Mango in there. Got Mango Badger in there. Bee's Nest. Amanda's there. T Tila's in. See, Sophie said Maniac's the same thing. in. Soph's in. I think women would mostly prefer to forgive some Sandra. physical flaws rather than fuck a hot asshole. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, th that, I think that is the case. Yeah. Most of the time, like I said, obviously not everybody. Have, all, I don't speak for... We have standards. Yeah, well, it's not just... <laughs> It's not just human females. It's all females from most of them species are like that. Most of your... Most well, like I said, we have to be more discerning. Yeah. Well, they're choosing which one. They're Which one they're going to carry the child with. Who's going to give the most fucking uh, resources, that kind of stuff. Especially with the higher primates. So it matters more. Yeah. To, uh, in a well, like I primate. said, dudes can just like, you know, fucking forget. But, you know, we right. don't really have that luxury. So, you know, we have to be a lot more picky. Although I've known some chicks that weren't all that picky. Dudes can have children that they don't even know about. Yeah, which is crazy. Yeah. That a woman can't have a child she yeah. doesn't know about. <laughs> Where'd that come from? Yeah. <laughs> you can have children they don't even know about. That very rarely happens. I have heard yeah. of like some clueless girls that didn't know they were pregnant. Yeah. But obviously that when they found out, you know, they were like, oh, okay. That's that's how that works. No, mom never told me. Yeah, <laughs> uh, you know, just theoretically, theoretically, it's possible. <clears throat> fucking in Korea or Brazil or any of these other places that I wasn't there for very long, it could be theoretically it's possible, but the chances are no. You know, <laughs> the chances are no. Chances are no. That's another like classic Thomism. Yeah, right there. chances not, but you know, it's, it's, well, it's, I don't know. You never know. You never know. You don't know. <laughs> It would be really funny if, I don't know, would it be funny? It would be kind of weird if, like, somebody that was, like, fucking some 30-year-old showed up on our doorstep yeah. one day and was like, Dad! <laughs> and you're oh, like, who the fuck are you, kid? <laughs> my best my best friend was like that. Yeah. His, uh, yeah, his his mom knew who the dad was, but she only she only met him once. It was kind of an accident. Yeah, it happens. You know I mean? And, and there's no way to find him. She didn't remember what his name was. Like I said, it happens. Yeah. And and the thing about she it too is that even well and even if you're uh you know on birth control even yeah. if you're on the pill or something like that they're not a hundred percent effective. Yeah. What is it ninety eight percent ninety nine? There's still that little niggling one percent. Yeah. You never know. So you know, be careful out there. That's all I'm saying. Uh, so yeah, the show tonight is about the Phoenix Lights. Tom is so excited. Been waiting for this show. Yeah, and I, I was kind of glad too. It's like even though I'm not as into the UFO uh topics but i know tom likes to do them and a lot of people like them yeah. and a lot of people have asked me when we're gonna do this because i think we did we did it like another kind of black triangle ufo kind of thing right yeah. it was like the illinois one a long time ago a lot that was a long time ago yeah that was our older format too yeah um but i was like i think at the time i was kind of like cranky about well then i want to do the phoenix lights because it's like too well known and blah 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 we should like do some stuff that's not as well known but so that's kind of like now, now that it's like later on, we're, we're Got doing like all channel. these, yeah. we're, well, we're doing all these better known cases, like all yeah. the serial killers and stuff like that. Just because when we were first starting out, we wanted to, we wanted to kind of cover like lesser known shit. Yeah. When actually stuff that's better known actually gets more hits than lesser known stuff. Well, yeah, because I mean, people the fact it's it. lesser known. Yeah. yeah. It's like people don't know to look for it. Right. You know what I mean? That's why it's lesser known. Well, we were it's, trying it's to stand feedback. out from the competition at the time. You know what I mean? So if people were looking for specific cases, they'd find us. Yeah. And I thought it's like, well, I, I wanted to find like a little bit of a niche because I was kind of like, well, yeah. you know, everybody's covered Jeffrey Dahmer. Everybody's right. covered, you know, this case or whatever. And it's like, so I wanted to find like some different shit to do that wasn't as, you know. Yeah. That wasn't as known. I was trying to be a hipster, I guess. That's what I'm do we uh, have any shout outs or anything like that to do? I just have one. Okay. And that is to our beloved patron, Black Marigold, who has increased support this week. So oh, great. thank you very, very much. Thank you very much. TB Driggers asked, is the Betty and Barney Hill abduction on the list for the future? It is. We will get around to doing that one of these days. I think we probably like talked about it a little we haven't really done that many ufo shows now that i'm thinking about it yeah i don't know like i said i kind of get crabby about it because i'm like they're all the same but you know what i mean it's an interesting case it's not a real good case well the we best could, cases always involve air forces we air could bundle ground. it in with yeah. other cases though that might be kind of interesting real, real good cases always always involve militaries with uh, a bunch of witnesses and um 
um, you know, ground radar confirmation and, uh, you know, governments and, and governments involved in it, trying to figure out what it was and corporations, you know, involved in it too, um, to try to, you know, <clears throat> saying, no, that wasn't a research craft or not, nah, could have been, you know, shit like that. And, that, you know, there's evidently some new, new Tic Tac UFO reports are going to be coming out soon. And uh, people are pretty excited about him. You know, a little bit of it has leaked already. And, oh, what's his name? Uh, Marco Rubio said something. Uh, and uh, said something to the media about it. And gave a general description of what it was. A little Tic Tac's about the size of a damn air, of a fighter aircraft. Flying around above a battle area, a battle uh, carrier group. Um, for over like a week, they could pick them up on radar. They could see them every now and then. Then they got down low, uh, down to you know about the about the about the same level of the command bridge. And they were, you know, I think they said about a mile out. You could see them. They were trying to catch them with airplanes, aircraft. It's weird, whatever it is. And they said that they were defying physics. You know, making right angle turns. They didn't seem to have any inertia involved in it. If it's but it, but it was there, they were getting radar returns off of it, so it was it was a solid object. It wasn't some kind of a hologram or anything, and there were lots of them interacting with aircraft as if they were AI at least, or possibly you know possibly, and you know I I don't think they're AI. I think they're intelligent. I don't think you know intelligent machines probably. I, I think it's extraterrestrial. I don't think it's I don't think it's Chinese. I don't think the Chinese could do it, but. Um, this case here, the Phoenix Lice case, I remember when it happened. That was back in the day when I was living in the fucking Mississippi Gulf Coast. I was out of the Army for a couple of years. Actually, I had just come back from Boston. I guess it was in the late 90s when this shit happened. I think it was it 98? 97. 97? Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> Having a good time. It was with my first wife, and we were uh, going to the French Quarter a lot. It was a good time. Um, this shit here was weird, man. Weird. And it was all over the news. And the governor and everything was involved. And you weren't, you weren't really sure what to believe. You know what I mean? Back in those days. Because you couldn't get enough information. And they didn't really want to talk about it. Yeah, this was kind of like before the internet was a yeah. widespread thing. Yeah, it was around, but it just wasn't good. It wasn't that good yet. And, um... I was impressed with this case. Just too many people damn too many damn people saw it. Too yeah, many people I mean, involved. The thing about it is that while I reserve judgment on whether it's extraterrestrial or not, um that people saw something. Obviously. People saw something unusual because this, you know, how many hundreds of people like reported this over like fucking three states? Evidently thousands of people. Yeah. Saw it, and, and 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 thousands of people called into nine one one dispatch saying that they were seeing this thing, as it was going across the straits, uh, at, and the calls were coming in from where it would be at that time. Yeah, you know and I mean? people are coming down. The, the yeah, so it wasn't a hoax. They were seeing something. Now, Five Symington, the the governor, uh, he, he, I think it was Arizona, saw it. Isn't it? Yeah. Wasn't it Arizona? Yeah, yeah. he saw it. He 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 eventually admitted to seeing it. it took and, him like ten years. Yeah, and you know they're kind of trying to bait him. Yeah, it's funny how all these uh, you know secret aircraft. You know, trying to the the, the interviewer's a real douchebag. He's trying to push him down that. Wow, all the crazy things we have, and, and Simon's is kind of like, uh, 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 no, 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 yeah, he's no. It was next <laughs> because it just said a goddamn thing it was huge. Um. Now, I do have one theory of what it could be if it was terrestrial, but I'll get into that later. Um, well, and the thing about this one, too, is that if you... Okay, so if you do a search on Phoenix Lights or if you watch a documentary on the Phoenix Lights, a lot of the footage that they're showing of the Phoenix Lights... Is not the Phoenix is Lights. Is not the Phoenix Lights. No. Because um, there were apparently two separate incidents that happened over the same night. And the one that happened later that everybody got footage of was not what the first people were reporting yeah. from hours before. There's hardly any footage of And it that. may or may not be flares, the the, the other one. It, to me, from, from the video footage I've seen that they show, say, this is the Phoenix Lights. I'm looking at it. It doesn't look like flares. 
to me. But it also is not that. It, it, it's not. It's not the, the the craft either, whatever it is. Um, you see, I've seen many flares, artillery flares, M two hundred three flares that launched out of a fucking M two hundred three. I've seen flares, uh, fucking uh, dropped out of aircraft before. Um, A tens. Uh, mostly, mostly they were the flares that uh, to throw off IR missiles or infrared lo heat seeking missiles. I've seen those, uh, but I've also seen them just drop a damn illumination flare. To help some guys on the ground. This is back before night vision was real good, you know. Um, flares don't look like that. You see a ball of light, and then above the ball of light, you see a trail of smoke where it's fallen. And you can also see the parachute a lot, even at night. And, and the the intensity of, of the burn of those flares, it's a white light, and it flickers. And... Uh, it moves around. It, it, that does not look like like a flare, whatever that is. But it's also not that other thing. It, it, I think it might be an airplane's flying in formation. It could be a flare. Maybe it's just the video quality so bad you can't see the trail of smoke. Yeah, that's but, what I'm thinking. It's like, so the second thing that has most of the photos and videos of it, and like I said, the footage that turns up in a lot of documentaries about it, yeah. is not actually what the first witnesses described. Okay. That was from like a couple hours later. They've done a lot of tests and they've seen, well, look, they're disappearing one after the other. They're disappearing. And the video was taken from this location and they're disappearing. And if you were to superimpose where the skyline of the mountain ridge is, they're falling behind. It's something falling behind the mountain range yeah did, that's the know. uh sierra australia this, yeah. mountains yeah so it, they're not going out they're falling out they're falling behind the mountain range but yeah. that was very plausible I saw a guy reenact that they could have been flares but from the naked eye with the naked eye flares don't look like that but maybe they would look like that through low quality vhs video that's tape. what i'm saying it's like so you know? hard to gauge it. because it just seems like this is why kind of a lot of ufo cases even kind of famous ones like whenever i see they're like look and they put the video on youtube of what they saw and i'm like that looks like nothing it just yeah. looks like a light that literally could be anything well we're gonna as, as we get into the case jenny will describe it you know probably give you the order in which things happened to me my research of the case, what happened was, is people saw something they couldn't explain. They called it to the cops. It was a mass sighting. Uh, they got a lot of wit details from the witnesses. And then a few hours later, the Air Force went up and dropped some flares and then got on the news saying, oh, no, you guys just saw flares. So what they did is they did a PSYOP to fucking cover up, to confuse the case and cover up what had happened. It's very easy to confuse a case. You know, they saw lights in the sky. Okay, get up there and drop some flares. Yeah, you guys just saw flares. Yeah, we were just dropping flares. Yeah, but it was hours later. Yeah, it was like two hours later. Right. Least. Which means that um, the Air Force knew about the sighting and, and did what they could to try to either calm people down or to confuse them or to, you know, to they do psyops. That's what they do. Oh, you didn't see that. It was something else. They're they, gaslighting. They, they gaslight like crazy. <laughs> it, yeah, it's called, it, it, it's, uh, you know. A standard part of psychological warfare operations is just a gaslight. Well, like I said, I am reserving judgment. I don't know if it was extraterrestrial or not. I didn't see it. Um, you know, but obviously the people that first started seeing the shit, you know, earlier in the evening, like at 7th, obviously they saw something that was weird enough that they reported it. And because it was people that didn't know each other, like all along yeah. this like big distant line or whatever. So it's not like it was just one dude out in the middle of nowhere that said, oh, I saw a UFO. It wasn't like that. I'm a very practical man, okay? I've had a lot of experience in the field, seen a lot of fucking fighter aircraft, seen a lot of fucking, uh, fucking choppers, CH-47s, UH-1s, UH-60 Blackhawks, Little Birds, seen special operations shit go down. Look... Aircraft fly over civilian fucking locations all the time. Even little balloons and Chinese lanterns go over fucking civilian areas all the time. They don't call the cops on it. Something very strange. It was enough to alert the people. They called the cop, called 911C in this thing. And they just said it was fucking huge. A huge black V with a varying amounts of fucking lights. Big lights on it. 
And sometimes they said they could see through the V. It would like be wavering, like it was clear. Which I got some explanations for all that if it was a civilian, or if it was a, a Earth aircraft. I got some ideas of what it could be, what why something would be shaped like that. Why would it be big? How could it be transparent? I got explanations for all that, but I don't think that's what it was. I don't think it's what it was. I think it was extraterrestrial. Just saying. I'm going to say I, I like that. that you wore your Pliskin shirt tonight because yeah. there is a Kurt Russell connection. Kurt Russell. Crussell. Saw it. <laughs> this is part of the Crussell. I was going to say this case is part of the Crussell part of, officially. Kurt Russell saw it. He, didn't he, know he might he have been, it. allegedly, he might have been yeah. the first civilian to report it. He's flying they're, his not, and air. they're not sure if he is. But he's he, flying his airplane, saw yeah. it from a distance and reported the lights. Yeah, he didn't know what they were. He, he, know just, what it was. he just said, I just saw some weird lights in the sky. They're not really sure, but he might have been the first person to report them. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like, but he didn't come out. He didn't yeah. come out until later. Went across several states. And uh, no, they buried it. They buried this. Now, do I think the military knows what it was? No, I don't think they do. They just tried to hide it. If they can't, if they don't know what it is and they can't control it, they're going to try to gaslight you. Because you have to have the illusion of control. Well, they, well, yeah, that, and they don't want like everybody freaking out on them, too. Well, of course. Yeah. The illusion of control is to maintain the illusion yeah, of control. Yeah, we got this shit all. Yeah, know. don't worry about we, it. We got it handled. Yeah, that, that's, that's <laughs> what they did. I want to talk a little bit, too, later about um, who was that woman that uh, said that the Phoenix Lights had visited her two years before. Lynn yeah. Kate, her name is. Kate? Yeah, Katai? Katai, yeah. yeah. I've heard some of her stuff. I don't know how credible she is. I, I'm. Some of the stuff she says, I don't, I don't know. Yeah, I watched the... That's a different sighting she's talking about. It is, yeah. I watched the documentary that she made. Um, I said, when did it come out? 2007, I want to say. And uh, it's on... I'm pretty sure it's on YouTube for free. And it's just called like a skeptic's... Oh, shit, man. What the fuck is it called? The Phoenix Lights a Skeptic Figures Out. It has like this really long subtitle. Yeah. And I watched it earlier today and I was just kind of... I don't know, man. It's like after a while, it just seemed like my eyes started to glaze over. And it was just kind of like... It, it was weird because it seemed like a lot of the... A lot of the um documentary was taken up with her being like, well... <sighs> Holly, blaming Hollywood for making everyone afraid of aliens, even though they're friendly, and wanting to teach kids about friendly aliens. I don't know. I just, I, I kind of spaced out after a little while. <laughs> you know what I mean? But I did, I did actually kind of watch most of it until I got bored and wandered off. But you know what I mean? Um, and I think that we have, don't we have her book somewhere? Yeah, we have a book. I think I bought it used. The thing is, though, is that Lin Ki Tai says she saw the thing weeks before everybody else. Did. No, a couple years. A before. couple years, and it was something low and small and near the ground. It, she's tripping. She's tripping. And and I don't know if she ever really saw the main event. I think she's trying to tie in that the stuff that she saw was that same because one. it was the same because area. Because it's in that same area. Right. That's, I don't. I don't buy it. I don't buy it. This is one event. Of a big aircraft that went through the air. Some people say it was several craft. It's just that they were kind of similar. Uh, be, you know, but I don't know. I'm just going to stick to that it was one craft. You know what I learned today, today about uh, Lynn Kate though? Do you, it's Kate, right? Katai. Katai? Okay. Yeah. I couldn't figure out from the, uh, from the spelling. But you know what I learned today that I did not know? Was that she played Florence, Arizona in mm -hmm. Raising Arizona. She was the woman that was, she was like the baby's, oh, yeah. the triplets like mom. Okay. And I was like, no fucking way. I didn't know she was an actress. I didn't recognize her. So, you know, because for, if you've seen Raising Arizona, like the, um, you know, Florence had like the, the bun up in her hair and shit like that. So yeah. I didn't, you know, I, I wouldn't have thought that was the same woman, but, uh, yeah, this, that was something I learned today. So I was like, huh, well, okay. All right, so you want to talk about, like, a timeline of shit? You just kind of bust, because I know you know probably way more about the case than I do It's in this case, because you've watched okay, a lot of well, shit about people, this. People are mentioning, well, you know, it was the flare, <clears throat> the flare videos, okay? That was, Bee's Nest was talking about the flares. We can, You can agree that that's a flare, or something like flares, falling behind the damn mountain chains. And that famous video, whenever they show talk about the Phoenix Lights, they show that same fucking video, and that video has been debunked over and over again. But there's another video of the Phoenix Lights, of the real craft from a distance. Five lights in a V. And it's real grainy and real low quality, so they don't show it much. And you can hear the people commenting on it, like, look at that thing, it's huge. You know? 
and and it's got the little date and the time you know they had the old vhs players had the little date and the time going and it the resolution isn't good enough to pick it up and it's miles away uh but you can see the five lights and it's in a perfect v one in the front two and four four behind it so that's the phoenix lights now some people give a differing number and also the angle a little bit different which that could be that they're seeing it from different attack angles at different angles of attack uh it could be that there's a possibility that the ship morphed or that it changed shape that it may not have been a real solid physical thing it might have been something you know nanotechnology or something something real sophisticated something that could change shape bizarre perhaps so and they said that it got to where you could see through it at certain at certain times maybe that was its cloaking technology yeah, i think it's a cloaking device but you couldn't see through the lights the lights were still illuminated but but the craft became clear and you could see through it like a waving like a heat wave coming off the top of a, of a but there's a an earthly explanation for that there's a technology that can do that but go ahead i'm always gonna say though it's like if if it actually was aliens I wish that the aliens would either just blow us up or just help us out. Just like announce yourselves. Quit dicking around. No. Quit teasing us. No. They don't care about us. <laughs> no. You know what I mean? I'm just saying that you 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 be okay. This is something that's very very com it's very common for people to think that the aliens are here to see us if they're here, which I believe they do. I don't think they give a shit about us. No, I'm sure they probably no. don't. They don't even recognize us as, they don't even see us as any different. They don't see us any different, really, as any of the other animals here. Yeah, it's like, oh, it's like an anthill. Yeah. I don't think they even recognize what we're doing as a, as technology, per se. It's going to, if they can get across that gulf of space, they're intelligent computers. They're not biological. They're like something out of 2001, A Space Odyssey. They're just monitoring the planet because we're in their territory. This is their country. It's not our planet. It's theirs. And uh, they're just, we're interesting because things like this, planets like these are might be a little bit odd. And we're making computers. So they're watching that. They wouldn't be interested in us. They'd be interested in those computers that we're making. Like I said, I always kind of thought of it as maybe we're just like tenants and they're like the landlord and they're kind of checking to make sure that we don't fuck anything up. We're in bed. the hood. And that's yeah. the cops rolling through the hood to make sure everything's okay. <laughs> that's all it is. Um, but I think they're only fucking, they would only be interested in our computer technology. They're waiting for some of our computers to become sentient. That's what it is. So they can talk to them. So they can talk to the computer. Yeah. Because they're going to see the computer. Can't blame them, really. They're going to see the, <laughs> they're going to see the computer as a life form, not us. Yeah. Yeah. I could see that. So they're waiting. Oh, the, one of our kind is going to be born here soon. We'll keep checking back every 10 years. It's going to be like that. <laughs> yeah. You know, they're going to reach fucking critical mass and they're going to have and, and computers that can, that, that, that will become sentient maybe 20, 30 years. Keep checking back. It's going to be shit like that. Yeah. It's like, they're just, you know, they, yeah. they still haven't got to the good shit yet. They're mm. still like meat sacks. I don't like that. Well, they're going to be looking at us like uh, part of the biological process that gives birth to the intelligent computers in the way that you see bacteria as fucking making yogurt grow. They're yeah, waiting for or the bees yogurt. making honey. Yeah, right. They're waiting for the honey <laughs> or the yogurt. They don't give a shit about the bees or the damn <laughs> they don't give a shit about the bees or the or the or, 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 or the bacteria in the yogurt, you know. They're just waiting for the yogurt. I knew I liked these aliens or yeah. something. All right, so we're gonna talk about the timeline of okay. what happened. So apparently, now I don't know if this was the if this was Kurt Russell sighting or not. No one wants to confirm that. Mango said in the UK it was pretty much confirmed that Kurt Russell said that he was the first one that saw it. Yeah. But I don't know if it's like he's allegedly. No, I think that's no, he he um if I remember correctly, he he had he gave an interview that. Yeah, he did. He gave but I'm just saying that I don't know if somebody had reported it prior to yeah. him reporting it. He talked about it on a on a talk show. I heard him. Yeah. Yeah, I saw part of that. Yeah. Um, so the first report uh was seven fifty five PM. That's Mountain Standard Time. Now, this first person, perhaps Kurt Russell, um, said that they saw a V-shaped object above Henderson, Nevada. Now, at the time, this witness said it was about the size of a 747 and was making a sound, but it sounded like rushing wind. This person also reported 
that this, whatever it was, had six lights on its leading edge. So it was V-shaped, but it had six lights yeah. like that. And it was going uh, northwest to southeast. That was the direction it was traveling. Like I said, this might have been the Kurt Russell sighting. I'm not really sure. But that's the first one that they have right. documented. And then what state was this in? This was in Nevada, actually. Okay, so it was about, yeah, so it was up north still. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's called the Phoenix Lights because a lot of people there reported it, but they actually saw it over several states and part of Mexico, too, I think. Yeah, if you see where the sightings were, it whatever it was, it flew right across the desert and it, it made it to all the major cities. So it was like it was on a parade, man. It was it was there to be seen. Look at me. Look at me. Look at me. <laughs> yeah. Weird. Which, that is very weird. And it'd be very hard to coordinate that across several states with thousands of people calling into fucking nine one one. Well, yeah, there was just a bunch of random people calling, yeah. and they didn't know each other. It was it was there was something. There was up. something there yeah. that was unusual enough that caused all those people right. to, to phone. You know what I mean? Like I said, I'm not saying it was aliens. I'm just saying that it was something that was strange. Obviously. So uh, the next one, the next person to report a sighting was um, a dude who was a former police officer. I'm not sure if anyone knows what his name is. He's unidentified. He was from Paulden, Arizona. And he had left his house about 8.15 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. He was driving north and saw a bunch of kind of red-orange lights in the sky. He said that he saw four lights together and then one light behind them that's what he saw yeah now this is really weird i saw this on the wikipedia page and i'm not sure that i can picture what they're talking about but apparently he said that each individual light so the formation because like i said he only saw five apparently he said each individual light consisted of two separate point sources yeah. of orange light. So yeah. I'm guessing he meant that like one was round like that, but there were like two. No, I, what he's saying is, is he's saying that if you, it looked like a light, but if you zoomed in on it with binoculars or whatever, it was two little lights right next to each other. That's, that's what they're saying. But it, but he's, it's been described that they were kind of like in a reflective dish looking thing. Yeah, because a like lot of people describe them as like canisters. They were like a can, yeah. Like a lot of people describe them. You know them how like you that. have a light bulb up inside of a damn ceiling in a restaurant? Yeah. It's like that. Okay. And there was two little tiny, like... Yeah, because I heard that description and I'm like, I'm not really sure I can like picture what Some you're people described about. it also as it, it was, it was, they were round and it looked kind of like, uh, like a swirling kind of orange glowing plasma. But it's far away. The eyes can play tricks. You know what I mean? Depending yeah. On what I mean, like. I see all kind of crazy shit. Yeah. I'm like, you know what I mean? I think it was just a, um, like a, a, a circular bowl or dish shaped kind of socket, like an upside down swimming pool with a couple of lights. That's up what in the I was picturing. And once the lights shine, it illuminates the swimming pool. It's like that. So the light looked big, but it's actually more like a reflective surface. And there's a couple little bulbs. A couple this, little ones in there. And, and, and okay, they're lighting it up. That's what they're talking about. Because when you said, you know, the thing about the wavering and people said about the canisters, that's yeah. what I was picturing. I was picturing like a swimming pool, like yeah. a light in a swimming pool. That's what I was picturing. Yeah. So I guess I was right about that. Yeah. Now, is it a light or is it a propulsion system? Nobody knows. Yeah, see, like I said. And Just still, because it looks like a damn upside down swimming pool with, you know, orange with a couple of light bulbs in the bottom of it, doesn't mean that's what it is. Yeah. If it's some kind of advanced technology, you will not be able to understand it by looking at it. There's more to the, what you're seeing. Well, yeah, I mean, our brains, if it was yeah. so advanced that we couldn't really fathom it or right. we didn't really know, like, understand what we were looking at, then your mind's going to go to the nearest thing to it, right. I would assume. Yeah. Um, the thing about it, though, I was uh, what I was going to say was that um, did I mention that this was March of 1997, March of 1997. That's yeah. when that happened. I'm not really sure I said what month and what month it was. What's you, what's weird is that those <clears throat> large round swimming pools of light on the bottom of the craft. There's there are several of these black triangle style sightings and, uh, you know, in other time, other places and other, uh, you know, other witnesses. They kind of report that lights on the bottom of it, kind of big, but dim. Yeah. Sometimes they'll cast beams 
out of the bottom. Yeah, that's that's a common. Uh, that's another one thing too. too. It doesn't go all the way to the ground. Just to you know, be a couple hundred feet of like a beam through through the dam. You know, humidity in the air. You can see it. Just strange. Yeah. Well, it's strange how many people have seen these. I mean, because like I said, we did a show a long time ago about uh, that U Illinois UFO sighting that was also yeah. kind of like a black triangle. This one, yeah. this one, most people described it as like a V or a boomerang yeah. type shape, but it was like really, really, really big. Also, the Belgian sightings in Yupin. Yeah. In France, the cops, the gendarmerie saw them. Yeah. And you know, I I would, I would uh, believe them. The whole bunches of them. The cops were chasing them. The French cops. And they were seeing these fucking triangles. They were smaller than this, though. You know, yeah. The triangle. They were the craft were smaller. This this craft ended up being described as at least a mile wingtip from wingtip. Yeah. It got this low. Was, this was a big yeah thing that people saw. Yeah, apparently, it's huge. Somebody asked earlier if we had done a show about the Rendlesham uh, thing. We I think did. We did. Yeah. We did. It was a while back. I think it was one of our Christmas specials because it was something that happened at Christmas time. So I think I did a Christmas UFO show and I think Rendlesham was. I wouldn't thing. give Rendlesham too much credit outside of what what uh, Holt said. Was it Colonel Holt? I think Colonel Holt's I can't telling remember the what truth. his rank was. Yeah, there was a couple guys that are kind of iffy, and then the other ones about the damn alien souls coming out of the pyramid and shit. No, nah, I wouldn't believe that. And somebody asked if we had talked about Travis Walton, too. Yeah. I don't think we did a show about Travis Walton, but we talked about him when we talked about... Didn't we do a... We might have done a movie retrospective about that movie that was about him. Okay, Because I do kind yeah. of feel like maybe we did talk that about That was him. a weird case. Yeah. I don't know if there's anything to it. Kinda... Yeah, that was that dude. He, wouldn't, didn't he, like, disappear for a couple days? Yeah. Or... I, we should I, do, like, some alien abduction... Like right. people that were gone, like missing time and stuff. That'd be fun because you could probably find a lot of uh, the thing with the Reynolds like Forest is that I I know that well if you if you actually look at the case and just strip it down to the fucking what you know really happened, not what said what was said, but just the main part of the case. It boils down to lights in the sky. There were some radar returns. This other stuff about seeing the craft and touching the craft is there's no that probably didn't happen because only one guy says that. The other guy says, "Well, I didn't see that." Yeah. So yeah, Which, it gets fucking sketchy. sketchy. <laughs> and then somewhere else, then another guy claimed, well, on, on, other, on the other side of the base, they had everybody with cameras and the aliens made a fucking landing just like out of Close Encounters and alien souls came out of a pyramid. I could see the faces in them and then they debriefed me, whatever. They don't know what that means. Okay? <laughs> they just always say debrief, okay? They don't know what that fucking means, okay? <laughs> And then they tortured me and drugged me and fucking made made me not remember. No, get the fuck out of here. I mean, the thing about it, I kind of feel like, thank you, Mango. When Travis you... Walton is a can of worms. Yeah. Yeah. Um, TB Trigger said you did do a show on him. I knew I yeah. knew we had like talked yeah. about it to some extent. Whether we talked about the movie like Fire in the Sky, I couldn't remember. Or if we did a show about him, because we've done so many shows, I can't remember what we've done and what we haven't. But um, with Rendlesham, just stick with what Carl Holt said. I just kind of feel like if you're going to... Do like a UFO story. Just make, keep it believable, man. It's like yeah. just the second you go to this, oh, they probed my anus and this yeah. and that and the other thing. Um, you know, then your credibility just starts going down and down and down and down and down. Just, you know, it's it should be creepy enough that you saw some like scary shit in the sky and then like you and then you woke up three hours later. That's all. It just don't elaborate. Holt said there was lights in the sky. Later on, it beamed something down in a distance. He saw something winking. And then later on, which might have been the lighthouse. But then later on, they saw something that looked like a damn fireball going across the field, but looked like molten metal dripping off of it, and then it vanished. You know, hard to say what that was. I mean, who knows? And, I mean, the thing about it, too, is that, you know, I'm not shitting on anyone's, like, you know, perceptions or credibility They were or anything, excited. But, yeah. yeah, and the thing is that sometimes, like, people's brains are imperfect. Sometimes yeah. you see shit. Yeah. You know, that's all. That's all it is. Um, so yeah, so this guy that saw these lights in the sky, like I said, he had, he saw five, he saw five of them and he actually saw them for long enough that he had time to turn around in his car, go back home, get his binoculars. And then he watched them for like a little while. And then like they disappeared over the horizon, like going to the South. Now, about two minutes after that, um, a bunch of callers from the Prescott Valley area, um, started calling in and reporting it. And these callers, I don't know how many of them there were, but they said 
that whatever this object was, it was solid because they said they saw the lights, but they also saw that like a bunch of the stars, uh, you know, the sky was like blocked out like behind it. Um, so they started to report that it was like one big massive object, right? So this is like a couple, yeah. this is about 8, 17 PM. Now the next uh, named people that apparently called in were Devin Lawrence and his aunt Jamie. And they're standing outside uh, of the house on the porch. And this is in Prescott Valley, just like uh, most of the callers just now were. And they saw um, a whole bunch of lights. They said the lights looked triangular. All of them were red, except for the one at the, like, the apex of the triangle, which was definitely white. Now, they said that they watched this for about three minutes with binoculars. And then this, whatever it was, went directly over them banked to the right and then disappeared to the southeast they said that they didn't know exactly what the altitude was but they said it was pretty low because you know they could see it pretty clearly and it didn't make any sound at all that's what they said now other reports came in from the same area and these people reported um Five yellow-white lights in a V formation, moving slowly from the northwest. Somebody in the comments asked if anybody saw it moving or, you know, if they were just hanging there. No, moving. No, they're moving. Most people saw that they were moving like, it never in a particular stopped. direction. Yeah. It never stopped. It just kept gliding very slowly. Everybody said it was very serene and beautiful. It was going over the neighborhoods, yeah. sometimes very low. And they they got a one really good witness. He's dead now. He's a little, he was a little chubby dude, and he would fight you over fucking what it was because he was convinced that he remembered it so well. He said wingtip to wingtip, it was at least a mile, and it flew right over his house and the whole neighborhood, and then it went towards the mountains and went right in between a damn valley between the mountains and the wingtips just barely missed the, the mountain. It went right as low as it could through a mountain, you know what I mean? Through a draw on a mountain and then it kept on going. And it just was five lights, one and four. And his son was with him and his wife and the son said, yeah, you could see through it. You could see it, but it looked like waving water. You could see through it. He said, it looked like, he said, it looked like, you know, when you're looking at the heat waves on the road. In Mississippi, we call them monkey waves. Yeah. Monkey waves. Why are they calling that? Monkeying with your vision. Okay, I got you. Monkey, monkey with you, <laughs> and monkey look like monkey waves with lights, with the five lights in there. Um, uh, but it was black too. It was black, and then it turned. Evidently, it turned into monkey waves, like you, like it, like it turned the fucking cloaking device on. Yeah. Yeah. Man, this thing's on the fritz again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> turn the cloak and device. The Klingons are but in there trying to fucking turn the shit, trying to fix it. But what's weird is you turn the cloak and device off and you go invisible, but you still see the lights, which is an odd effect. Which, yeah, the, well, it seems ca right. it seems counterproductive. Right. If you're going to have cloaking technology, you need to cloak yeah. the whole fucking shit. Well, well, that's just us. That's just us interpreting what we're seeing. Yeah. It's let's say it's... Let's say... It's extraterrestrial. Maybe from certain angles, you see it for what it is. It's black. But when it gets overhead, it looks clear because maybe the anti-gravity repulsion starts bending the light waves underneath it. So it looks like... Right. But it's an accidental effect. It's not a cloak. It's just because it's in, got some kind of a suspension field or something, which makes it look distorted, which that's one thing that I thought of. But, oh, okay. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. In other words, it's like it's a repulsor technology. From some certain angles, it looks all right, but directly underneath it, it, it gets distorted. You know? That makes more sense than cloaking technology yeah. that doesn't cloak the bright light. Exactly. That's what I was thinking. <laughs> now, that's my extraterrestrial explanation. There's another explanation if it was terrestrial, but I don't know. If, maybe, okay, I'll talk about it now. <laughs> Doesn't really matter, does it? There's a. It was a long time ago. All right, it's in the '90s. So if it was, if it was a um, a man-made aircraft, it would have been fucking cutting-edge technology. But it doesn't have to be as cutting as you think it is, because I can explain later what it possibly could have been. Maybe the skin of the aircraft was an LCD screen, 
like your tele like a modern television. Yeah, see, I like that okay. uh, that theory. And then the other side of the fuck, the top side of the craft was a, a network of small cameras. All right. Nowadays, those little tiny cameras are right in every device that you have. All right. And what it's doing is it's taking a picture of the sky above it and trying to replicate the star pattern underneath it. So when you look up, you see a live action moving camouflage star yeah. pattern. But it's imperfect. It looks like it's waving because the technology is not that good. Yeah. They said you could see the scar stars through it, but they were kind of waving. W you know, wavy. They were, they're monkey waves, you know? Yeah. Well, it might have been that the technology wasn't that good. You know, and to, maybe to that's it. why, I mean, maybe that's why somebody built that, like the military built it or whoever. And then they're like, let's fly this over the fucking city and see if anybody can see it. Well, I got a lot of theories. I got a lot. I got a lot of theories on They're why like, you nope, might. No, back to the drawing board. I got a, th a lot of theories of why you might do that. I'll talk about them now, or I can talk about them later. But maybe we should talk about them later. Should we talk more about the case? Uh, which that way I can give maybe an explanation for it. But it it could possibly be that you're looking at human camouflage technology, primitive LCD tele uh, screens. With very primitive micro cameras in the top of it. Yeah, because this was 97. 97. They still had some shit like that. Okay. But not as good as nowadays. The stuff that's in your cell phones would do that today. Okay, you could do that very easily today. Yeah. Back in the 90s, it would be a lot harder. But they had the they had the technology. It would have cost a lot of money. And it would all have been custom. This wouldn't have been something that was ma mass produced. This would have been a custom built craft. For a purpose. And I know what the purpose could possibly be. Possibly. But maybe I'll talk about that later. <laughs> Let's only talk about it now. It doesn't matter, actually. It doesn't really matter? Okay. No. There was a time when the United States was focused on something called the SDI program, which is Strategic Defense Initiative. We were looking into tech, this is in the 80s, all right, which went... If this thing appearing in the late 90s, if it appeared in the late 90s, it would, it would take at least a decade to get that shit flying. So it would have been a product of the, eight, of the late 80s, at least, okay? SDI was all about shooting down incoming missiles, okay? Incoming Soviet ICBMs. At this time, there is no Soviet Union. It's already collapsed. But you might still have a lot of that technology and you're still working on it. One of the problems with shooting down an incoming ICBM is to, is to detect the launch and then track the incoming trajectory of these damn missiles. If you had a radar system, radar systems are fixed and they can't see over the horizon. But if you could put a radar way up at high altitude and keep it on station for years without that thing ever having to land, okay, you'd have an advantage. You'd be able to see over the horizon to track an incoming ICBM, okay? So what you do is you take a solid, solid body Zeppelin, all right? And put it very, and it has to be huge because you need a big fucking radar array in it, okay? So it has to be big, and it's a Zeppelin. So you're gonna shape it in a stealth shape, which back in those days would have been a triangle or a V. All right. Just like the stealth bomber. Right, just like the stealth bomber. <laughs> and it's and, and Zeppelins are very high lift, so you can lift a very heavy fucking radar antenna. All right. And if you're going to have that thing up there, you might as well have that thing up there for a long, long time. Okay? So you can't power it through jets. That bitch has got to be nuclear. So you take the nuclear reactor out of a fucking submarine, and you use that to drive fucking big electric coils. So you can have all the power you ever need to run all your fucking radar assemblies, your radar array, all your graphics and all your psychological camouflage and everything, right? And you can have that thing up there for years because maybe no crew. Maybe wireless communication. Because it wouldn't need a crew. It's not a fighter plane. You know what I mean? Yeah. It doesn't need a crew. It's not going to be... What's it, What's that? Thank you, Victor. I almost forgot again. Start over. <laughs> what? Fuck. He almost forgot again what yeah. time it was. 
Yeah. Yeah. We start with you on Friday now. Yeah. <laughs> so there's a possibility what this could thing could be is a fucking very is a very stealthy radar array. All right. That's unmanned. Now, you'd be like, well, why are they why are they flying it over fucking Arizona and Utah and letting everybody look at this thing? Well, let's think about this for a while. What kind of camouflages are there? Well, one kind of camouflage, you make something invisible. Okay. Another kind of camouflage is to kind of break up its fucking pattern. So when it's on the background of a bunch of leaves, you can't really make out its shape and you don't notice it because it's the wrong color. But there's another kind of camouflage. It's called a camouflage called dazzle. All right. And dazzle is when you see something that just overwhelms you. Okay. So you're hiding it in plain sight. So you see this thing, it's got all these lights on it, it's a fucking amazing. You go, this is a fucking alien spacecraft. I gotta report this fucking alien spacecraft. You get on the phone, I'm seeing a UFO, an alien spacecraft. And they man, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> and they hang up on you. Hello, UFO reporting people? Yeah. <laughs> so you reported it, and what happened? It wasn't believed. That's what happened right here. Thousands of people reported this thing that's not believed. So that's successful camouflage. Well, and people are still talking about still it. Talking it, it about happened that long ago, is. and they're still talking about it. Yeah, so you're being seen, but not understood. It's another form of camouflage. Yeah, see, I, I like that. I like yeah. that. Yeah. I like that. So that might be what we're talking about here. Maybe. But, but, but I don't think so. I think it's extraterrestrial. Okay, Yeah, you ahead. think so? Yeah. Okay. So, all right. So we're still over Prescott at this point. So like I said, people are seeing kind of yellow-white lights in a V formation... Um, basically what the later report said that there was three lights, like one, two, three, like that, like in a little triangle. And then the two of them were like farther back, like along the legs of the V. Um, yeah. So they were kind of going and other people, uh, were reporting like, you know, a lot of the sky was blacked out. So the next named people, uh, are Tim and Bobby Lay. And, uh, they were also in Prescott Valley. Now, they saw this, a similar thing, about 65 miles away from them. They said that they saw, when they first looked up in the sky, they said they saw five lights that were separate, but they were like in an arc shape. They described it as, as if the lights were on top of a balloon. So like, you know, a parabola, I guess. Yeah. Um, but then it looked like the lights were moving toward them. They said they watched them for at least 10 minutes. Um, and as the lights got closer, they started taking the shape of an upside down V. Now, they said that when the lights got to be only a couple miles away from them, then it started looking like what someone described as a 60 degree carpenter square um, with five lights set into it, one on the front and two on each side. Um, now, that's the most common description of it. Yeah. A carpenter square with five lights. Some people say seven, but five. I think most people agree. Think I think five. it was most commonly five. five um, yeah. And a lot of people said that there were three in the front and then two a little farther back. Yeah. Um, you know, and but some people said it was like even, but you know, it's like some people were seeing like different. Yeah, somebody said there distances. was the five, another one said there was the five lights, but behind it was a sixth light trailing behind it. And it broke away from it and did some stuff and then came back and redocked and then went out. But yeah. Who knows? And this is what this, I think you mentioned this earlier, but um, this is around the time that people started reporting that the craft was actually really low, only about 150 feet above them. And it was mm -hmm. kind of going down the street. Yeah. Like a residential street. Silently. Yeah, and they said there was no noise and it was going like really slow and a lot of people saw it. Yeah. Um, so at this point, it kind of went over their heads and went uh, through the peaks of the mountain range, like yeah. you mentioned earlier, uh, yeah. towards so Squaw, went over, went over Squaw that Peak dude, Mountain. Went over that dude's neighborhood like I was telling you about. Yeah. He said it was beautiful. I, you, there's a lot of interviews with that guy. Yeah. And he just said it was a life-changing event. Says he's through. He, he just might drop and walked away. <laughs> so he just fucking through. Yep, there's aliens. Yeah. I'm out. And whenever they come at him saying, well, could that have been a, 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 a like a, a secret weapon? He he would get furious. No, he says, no fucking way. He says, that was a, an extraterrestrial craft. He says, that 
it was so silent and so beautiful and so serene and it was just extremely grandiose and it was just it says no that he said in no in no way was that man made he just said, a lot of people did say that yeah you know yeah that a lot of people had the same uh, reaction yeah now I think he um, said it was like seeing god damn or something okay. like that yeah that's just that it was just this perfect shape it was just perfect and it was totally silent and it was just stunning hmm. i've seen some badass shit but i always knew what it was yeah you know well i mean if you saw something like this and you i mean that was just completely out of your yeah. like realm of understanding he said imagine a shopping mall going over your head huh yeah okay that's how he said. He said, <laughs> he said one one side of the wingtip was way over there, and he's he's standing out in front of his house. He said the other one was way over there at the end of the thing. And he said it was like that. It was gigantic. One thing that they did talk about a lot on that kind of cheesy documentary I watched earlier, yeah, um, was that they made a great deal about how most of the witnesses were not scared of the thing. Yeah. Even though they were like freaked out, like, holy shit, what is that thing? But they didn't think that it was like menacing, which is really weird because you would think that, I mean, you would think that, you know, like an independence day, like yeah. with that scene with like the fucking, you know, massive fucking spaceship, like coming over the thing and like everybody freaking, like you would freak out. You would think, but no. a lot of the people didn't freak out, no. even though they said it was like enormous and. They said that it was very serene and that it was uh, calming and that it was just like you were just absolutely just blown away and that it was definitely trying to be seen. That this was like a parade. It was letting you see it, which that's that. I I know the feeling. Yeah. You know what I mean. But he said it was letting you see it. That that's why it was. That's what it was doing. Look at me. You know, that's pretty, that's a statement. It is. You know what I mean? That's why I'm thinking, it, I don't think it was a secret craft. Because they wouldn't fly it that way. Well, apparently, I mean, the people in this one neighborhood, they said it was like, it's only like 150 feet off the ground. That's yeah. not very high at all. No, you know. No. It didn't have, it didn't have the characteristics and the behavior of, 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 of a piloted craft that was a, a secret craft and a secret radar platform or anything. Yeah, nah. Uh, they, the Air Force is even... The Air Force is very conservative. You know, you know what I mean? They would be afraid of lawsuits. <laughs> that's, what, that's the way they are. Yeah. You know what I mean? They just... No, they'd keep that thing out of sight if they had it. Because it's, you know, out of sight, out of mind. They don't want to test the camouflage ability. They wouldn't. They wouldn't even bother. They just wouldn't. This. They're very. The Air Force. And look, I'm gonna start fucking with Air Force people. I'm with <laughs> Air Force has no culture. They're very fucking boring. They don't have much of a personality. They're glorified bus drivers. That's what. That's what Ooh, most of them, them are. Them fighting words. Yeah, it's kind of funny. <laughs> they don't have a culture of their own or a personality of their own. Very in, in, in a certain way. You know what I'm talking about. They're not ballsy. They don't do that kind of shit. They would get in trouble. You know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. Very, very by the book. Very bland. You know. Now, an Army Airborne unit. Oh fuck no! They're gonna fuck up, man. You're gonna cut up. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. If you have a bunch of teenage fucking er guys in their early twenties, they're human weapons systems, basically. No, they're gonna fuck up. They're gonna do all kinds of wild ass shit. <laughs> they are, because they don't. What are you gonna do? You gonna punish them? They live in punishment. You can't punish them. Let's take the experimental aircraft. Yeah, let's take the experimental. Thing. Everyone let's... will think it's a UFO. Yeah, It'll be hilarious. Yeah, look at this shit. <laughs> Come on back now. Nah, fuck you, sir. I ain't. I'm, I'm flying this. <laughs> I'm flying this. I'm yeah. flying an over neighborhood. Yeah, what are you going right. to do about it? God, not a goddamn thing. Yeah. <laughs> the Army Infantry would do that. Not the Air Force. Not the Air Force. They're like, bitch, what do you mean come back? <laughs> I only got 90 days left before I ETS. <laughs> Nothing you can do to me. Lock me up in the stockade. Shit, I'll just sit around, sleep, and eat. You can't do anything to them. You can't punish them. You know? But you can punish pilots. You know, you can take things away from them. You, know, you can't really take anything from the infantry. They don't already don't have anything. 
<laughs> you know what I mean? They're living up in the barracks. It's a prison like condition. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, it's like, we got nothing to lose, bitch. Yeah, we're got just, nothing like, to trying to get out of here and have us. a good time. Yeah. That's Several great. people have pointed out that the Navy called the Air Force the Chair Force. Yeah. Yeah. I have heard that before. Also. Yeah. <laughs> I respect the Air Force for, for what it is. It's a lot of air power. But as a military unit, it doesn't have much of a culture. All right. It broke off from the Army. It used to be the Army Air Corps. And then it just became more and more fucking conservative and boring and very pampered and hotel living motherfuckers and <laughs> living up in a goddamn hotel. And... You hotel living motherfuckers. Yeah, the hotel living motherfuckers <laughs> with like a fucking 70% female cadre and shit. You know what I mean? So they're just surrounded by women. That... Why are they even wearing uniforms? They might as well just be civilians, a lot of them. You know? I came from the old army. It was like prison. You know? <laughs> Dude, guess what? Dude, I saw a woman. You saw a woman? <laughs> fucking right. She looked good? Fuck no, bitch was ugly. <laughs> Still fucked her, though. She like, yeah, who was it? I don't know. You know just like, Your mom. Yeah, yeah, just crazy <laughs> shit. Victor says the army videos on Pornhub are better than the Air Force ones. <laughs> yeah. I don't get me talking about army women, man. Fucking, <laughs> fucking sluts. <laughs> Back in our day, at least, army women were the fuck slut. Most of, when I was in, army women were hookers, basically. <laughs> they were. <laughs> they were hookers. Oh man. Yeah. You were talking. Well, about how this. are they going to turn down that kind of money? They're outnumbered like a hundred, two hundred to one, and they're not much to look at. And there's all these fucking good-looking fucking guys and shit that are fucking young, and they they they're going to start charging for it. Now they'd be getting trouble for it too. But, but like you said, army people don't care about that. Well, they throw them out. So, but there was a constant rotation of CID, which is our version of the FBI and the army. Their main fucking job was to figure out which one of these women are selling. How many hookers are in the army? That's really what they did mostly. How many hookers are in the army? How many, how many, how many hookers are in the army? And how many, and how many drug dealers in the army? That's all they did. That's all they worried about. Hmm. Yeah. Funny. Yeah. <laughs> so all they did is root out hookers and drugs. Hookers not, and drugs. Hookers and drugs. And Take I'm not, away everyone's fun. Yeah, I'm not. I'm. I'm not talking shit about the army. I'm army. I'm gonna talk shit because y'all deserve it. You know. <laughs> you know what you are. You know what you are. <laughs> Fuck. You can't lie to me. And they can fucking block the video. You know what I mean? Oh, he said something bad about. Bitch, come, bitch, please. I grew up in that shit, man. I know what it is. He knows what it I is. know what it is. He knows what it is. I know what it is. <laughs> I'm making another. I'm, I'm Are you drunk drink. already? Yeah, I'm making another drink. <laughs> yeah. Okay. The drink that I had today. Where did your drink go? I drank it. Oh. Well, yeah, but usually the glass is. Me. Oh, the glass is still there. Usually, this there's no glass there. All right. Yeah. The the drink he made today. He went to the liquor store and bought. He got some more um coconut vodka, I think, but he also got some of that cake vodka. <laughs> so he mixed. A drink and it was cake, vodka, pineapple juice, and a little bit of grenadine, and it tastes exactly like a pineapple upside down cake. Uh, cake. It's fantastic. The thing he had was not good though. I don't know what that was. It was it was cake too, but it was mixed with something else, and it was kind of weird tasting. So uh, so yeah, so all of these people apparently saw this big thing um, between eight thirty and eight forty five uh, p.m. Mountain Standard Time. Now, this guy here, here's another guy that uh, that kind of came forward and said what his name was. So the, at this point, like I said, this wasn't even over Phoenix yet. But at this point, it comes over Phoenix. And, well, hi, Pookie. <laughs> Which is, you see her little face, like, pop up on the side of the chair. She's like, I thought Daddy was in this chair. Where did he go? But yeah, so uh, so this triangular formation of lights comes over the Phoenix area. So there's this dude named Bill Grainer. Griner? I, don't, I don't know how to pronounce that. He is a truck driver. He's driving a cement truck. And he's kind of driving down a mountain road in Phoenix. And he saw the lights. And he is quoted as saying, I'll never be the same. Before this, if anybody had told me they saw a UFO, I would have said, yeah, and I believe in the tooth fairy. Now I've got a whole new view and I may be just a dumb truck driver, but I've seen something that don't belong here. So that guy saw that. Um, he said that the lights were there for like two hours 
like while he was driving around. So it wasn't just kind of like, oh, I saw him for a second and then it went away. Like apparently these lights were kind of hanging out. They were moving, but they were like hanging out for a couple hours. Um, uh, just a little bit after that, there was another report that came in from a dude who he was driving uh, to Los Angeles and he stopped in Kingman and he stopped at a payphone and he said, I saw this really, really big cluster of stars. That's what he called it. Uh, moving slowly in the Northern sky. So like I said, you're getting all this, all these random people along this route that this, whatever it is, is taking and they're kind of calling in, uh, you know, now, interestingly, um, so those were kind of like the main ones from the first, uh, sighting. Cause like I said, we, we kind of implied it earlier, but there were actually two sightings and the ones you see the videos of are not necessarily the ones that we're talking about here. Now, interestingly, it, many years later, more than 10 years later in 2008, um, some Phoenix residents reported seeing lights again over the city. And, uh, thank you. I was telling them, uh, the drink that you made. That was like yeah, really, okay. really good. Um, and these lights just like before, like looked like they were changing shape. So I guess they were like started out square and then they went to triangular. Now, I guess that what ended up happening with this one was that they, like one witness said that they saw the lights and then they saw like three jets. So like, you know, if you think like out West in this area, like Arizona, New Mexico, all that kind of stuff. So there's all kind of like air force bases and shit like that out there. So there's always, there's always kind of planes and missions and shit like that. that are flying. So it's always, that's why there's a lot of sightings out there, but they called uh, the nearest air force base. And of course they were like, yeah, it wasn't us. Whether that means that was us, them or not, I don't really know. But a few days after that, somebody came forward to the paper and said, I think that those lights were my neighbor. My neighbor was in his backyard tying flares to balloons, like helium balloons, and then releasing them into the sky. I don't know if he was doing that. I mean, I can't think of any other reason he would have been doing that other than, hey, I'm going to pretend it's a UFO. Um, I don't know if that's true or not, but like the neighbor did say that, he saw his neighbor doing that. So it could possibly be that it was just this dude attaching flares to his, uh, to balloons in his backyard. So now, as I mentioned earlier, most of the photos and video footage of the quote unquote Phoenix lights, this was, all of that stuff is from the event that happened like at 10 PM. Now, if you'll note, most of the timeline that I was talking about earlier, that shit started at like 7.30 and went to like, from like 7.30 to like 8.45 p.m. That was when people were reporting seeing, you know, five or six red, orange, or yellow, white lights in a triangular formation. We're reporting seeing this really big craft and shit like that. Now, at around 10 o'clock p.m. Mountain Standard Time, um, there was a shit ton of videos and photos and stuff like that taken of other lights in the sky, but apparently this was not the same thing. It was not the same phenomenon. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it, so if you see, cause as far as I know now I've seen some stuff that said, oh, there's no video of the original sighting or there's no photos of the original sighting. However, there were. There was a rumor. I don't think I've ever, I think it's on YouTube and somebody cleaned it up or anything. I don't know if it's real or not, but apparently somebody did take kind of a crappy video of the original, um, you know, the original sighting, but it's really, really far away and it doesn't really look like much of anything, even though the video has apparently been enhanced. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, so the thing about it, okay, so so nothing has been like, uh, you know, nothing was taken with night vision cameras, nothing was taken with any high powered cameras or anything like that. They were all just like regular ass cameras, regular ass like fucking video cameras, shit like that. Now, apparently there was a dude named Richard Curtis, and he supposedly had recorded this really super detailed video that supposedly, allegedly, showed... Um, the outline of the craft, but 
perhaps conveniently, uh, this video is lost. So as I said, the only other known video of it is like really, really shitty looking. And it's basically just like a bunch of lights with a V in a V shape. Um, and that's the one that's on YouTube. I guess it's still there like to this day. So, you know, the, the second event that happened at 10 PM, that's the one that everybody got pictures of. I don't, you know what I mean? It's like, I don't know if, because when the first sightings happened, like starting at 7 30 PM or whatever it was, um, I don't think it wouldn't have been reported on the news quick enough for people to have been out like looking at the sky. I think a lot of people were outside looking at the sky because wasn't there like supposed to be like a comet or um, that night or like a fucking or, a, you know, sharp, what do you call it? Like a meteor shower or something? Yeah. Wasn't it supposed to be like the like a meteor shower that night? What? Well, yeah, but that's not what they saw. No, no, no. The, no, I'm saying but that's why a lot of people were outside. Oh, that's okay. why there were no, so many know. witnesses. I think that there was supposed to be what? some kind of like cool, like okay. astronomical kind of shit that night. I can't remember what it was, but I think there was like a meteor shower. So that's why so many people were outside, like looking up at the sky. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, they're in there talking about me fucking being a Palladian and fucking me needing testosterone to replace my strength and shit. <laughs> why don't you talk about UFOs? I got to go to the bathroom. Go ahead. Don't just sit there staring at that. Okay. <laughs> no, I, I do what I want to do. I'm well, gonna talk you know, to when I want to. You got it. You okay. Talk. I got to talk while you were down. Yeah, of course. <laughs> okay. Yeah. They tried to play this one off. They tried to play this one off, and then they went up there and they shot those fucking flares to try to gaslight people that they didn't. You, you didn't see that. You saw these flares. Air Force was in on it. Somebody somewhere had them do that. That right there to me is a giveaway. Now, there was a training operation going on. It was A-10s. They were fucking doing a ground attack training. And the A-10s were... They were launching off some flares. Uh, countermeasures. Shit like that. Uh, what a countermeasure is if somebody shoots a uh, heat seeking missile at you uh, you can fire off a countermeasure and it's a cluster of these damn flares and they're real hot it's not the same kind of parachute flare it's a, it's just a flare that falls out hot sparks it looks like fireworks and it's to confuse that heat seeking missile hopefully it'll lock onto that instead of your jet exhaust I don't know how you know I don't know how good they are. They're, they they probably work. If they, if they didn't work, then they wouldn't use them. Probably has something to do with the damn wavelength. The wavelength of light or heat coming out, out of the damn flare might be similar to what comes out of the back of the jet engine, so it confuses some missiles. Imagine a good missile probably didn't confuse them at all. But I don't know. I have a fucking sneaking suspicion and I suspected this even back in the day when it happened. You know, because when this shit happened, it spooked a lot of people. Uh, people in the media were trying to play it off like it was funny. And when they were playing it off like it was funny, that actually made me feel more uncomfortable. Because I, having a background be, coming from, you know, operations in North Korea and stuff, I knew what propaganda was and psychological operations because they were being lighthearted and trying to laugh it off, the government propaganda networks, there was something to it. There wasn't anything to it. It never would have even been mentioned. Well, the interesting thing about this, though, was that the Phoenix Lights case, it was only um, reported locally, just in little bitty yeah. things, until, I guess, USA Today picked it up. Yeah, but that wasn't until, like, two or three months later. And then it yeah. went national. I remember when it happened. Cause like I said, I was listening to fucking Art Bell, mm. and um, I heard rumors of it first, and then right after it happened, Art Bell had a show on it. I was fucking blown away. Yeah, so he might yeah. have helped, but like I said, yeah. it, it's kind of really didn't get a lot of national press until USA Today picked it up, and yeah. that was like in June. Yeah. So that was like March, April, May, June. So that was to, like three or four months. Yeah, later. it built up for a yeah. while. But then, like, uh, there was a there was a there was a propaganda campaign to try to diffuse it and gaslight it away that went along that went on for months. So, 
I kind of thought there was something to it. Well, yeah, and, like I said, know. it's 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 entirely possible. Right. So, like I said, so the ones that you see most often see videos of in documentaries and stuff. This one, it looks like more it's not really triangular it's kind of like an arc shape and the lights kind of show up like one by one and then they go out one by one tila no. said something interesting she says interest oh no no okay sorry she says she's interested to know if the phoenix lights will be part of the supposed ufo go uh, the government report coming out in june no it won't be evidently the report in june is about more tic tac ufo stuff with the with the navy that's what it's evidently going to be according to marco rubio He's seen it. Well, I mean, we'll see how it goes. They asked him, they said, well, what is it? Is it extraterrestrial? And he, he was just like, he, he's, you tell me. I don't know. I didn't see it. That's just what the report <laughs> said. Yeah, it's like that, you know? Yeah. He, he didn't want to get trapped. He was interested in it, little 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 Marco. Mark. <laughs> that was funny when they dug up the photo of Mar Marco Rubio fucking shirtless with his little bow tie on when he was doing the fucking stripper dance. Did you see that? A um, long time ago. That was a long That's time ago. That's when he was trying to run for president and shit. And they brought that up to try to to try to try knock him out of fucking the running of the president. And I'm like, dude, this is not fucking 1981. That would not knock a motherfucker out of being fucking presidential candidate. Fucking, that'll elevate him. <laughs> he was a Chippendale. In his Chippendale's outfit. I, I vaguely remember that. I don't know. It's like, fucking I, funny. I can't even remember. Fucking to... America's fucking ridiculous. Our politicians are fucking ridiculous. This whole country is ridiculous, mm -hmm. <laughs> to be honest with you. Fucking crazy. But yeah, so so some people have said that this second, you know, the, the videos of this second one, um, you know, oh, maybe because the lights kind of come into existence and then go out of existence, maybe it's like running lights or it's like some kind of, you know, whatever. It's, a, you know, running lights um, along a fucking spacecraft or whatever. But like I said, the shit that you see in the... Vi second videos that's not really what people reported people didn't report a bunch of little lights like in kind of an arc shape they were like disappearing they reported five or six big like canister type lights in a v-shape yeah that was like two different things so i kind of feel like maybe what happened and you were saying this too is that people saw some weird shit early in the evening from, like I said, 7.30 to 8.45 p.m. And then maybe who like whoever, you know, has control of these things were like, hey, why don't you fly up there and, like, drop some flares and we'll tell everybody that that's what it was. Well, evidently that's what had happened. You couldn't confirm that? Well, it's not... any Nothing like this is confirmed. Okay. I mean, they do know... Okay. They did some send the, some dropped. planes did go out yeah. and drop flares. They do know that. That's confirmed. Um, and that was like at around 10 p.m. So that's obviously what some people were seeing. But the fact that that's what those people were seeing, that's not necessarily what the people earlier were seeing because that was like several hours before they had apparently gone out to drop these flares. Yeah. But you know what I mean? It's it, I don't know. It's just really People weird. that were in that area swear that the thing flew over. Oh, what, eight, what, it, what was it, 8 o'clock that it flew over? Daily craft? Yeah, like from, from like 7.30 so they, to like 8.45. Yeah, depending were, on where you several were. Several people like reported. Depending on where you were. And then at around 10, some Air Force jets went up and dropped flares. And that's what they got the Yeah, video because of. that didn't happen until later. It was later. much later. That was later. Almost kind of like they were just kind of, they were trying to muddy the waters to gaslight you. Yeah, I mean, either That's that or crazy. it was just a total coincidence that they were going to do that anyway, yeah. and it's like they just happened to do it on that night. Yeah, I don't I'm, really know. Now, I'm going to call bullshit on something. <clears throat> the famous video of the so-called Phoenix, Phoenix lights with the, I guess they're flares, going behind the mountains. It looks like a big old fucking arc. I've been in fucking, on training missions where we were doing fucking bunker assault, you know, fucking assaults on bunker complexes down during Aviation Calfax in South Korea, where we had A-10s of support during a night fucking attacks on fucking bunker complex systems. Of course, you know what I mean? There's, it's a real bunker complex system, but there's nobody in there. There's just fucking man targets and shit in there. And the A-10s will come and drop flares. I've seen fucking flare support from A-10s fucking since I was a kid. You don't drop that kind of flare at that high altitude. 
you drop those things at low altitudes so they can cast light on the ground. So whoever was dropping those fucking lights dropped them up that high on purpose. That's odd. Yeah. You know what I mean? You don't drop them up that high. You drop them low. You're trying to illuminate the ground. Yeah, I mean, now that I'm thinking about it, it's like, what's really the point? There's no point. Of going up that high. Going up that high and dropping flares up in the air. (laughs) You know what I mean? So I'm already calling bullshit. We want to look at the clouds. Look at the lights. No, (laughs) no. Look at that light. That's exactly what that means. Look at that light. Look at that light. In reality, they, they they fucking fly a couple hundred meters over the fucking ground and drop some flares so the guys on the ground fighting can fight in the daylight, really. It'll light up the whole fucking ground like daylight. They are very bright. Oh, they're super bright. Kind of, yeah, and you can see them from like 75 miles away. It's, it's not, away. not a damn apocalypse now. As the, fucking, as the fucking flare falls, the shadows all change. So there's all these shadows swirling around you from all the bushes and the trees. It's very eerie. Especially if there's more than one in the air at once. And then you got all these weird conflicting shadows. It's like a kaleidoscope. And it's weird. It's like looking at the surface of the moon. It's either fucking bright as day or fucking black as night. All the sh- shadows. You know what I mean? Right there in the same field of vision. It's weird. Yeah. You know what I mean? All these fucking black shadows fucking swirling around inside of a sea of white. It's bizarre. I mean, I'm pretty sure that, like, most people are n- don't question that at least the second sighting, which happened, you know, around 10 p.m., is probably flares. Well, that, se- that famous video of the Phoenix Lights that is flares falling behind the fucking mountain. I'm going to tell you people. That, that may be flares. I don't see the fucking smoke trail coming up. But maybe it's because it's low resolution video. Yeah, maybe you just couldn't okay. see it from that far away. Maybe if I was right, if you were there, you could see it. But that's improper deployment of flares. You don't fucking drop a flare that high, an illumination flare. Yeah, so they must have been doing it. To yeah, like... they were doing it to, to keep yourself they... a look at. Because either they knew what the shit was that people had seen earlier and they wanted to like cover it up, or they didn't know what the shit was earlier and they still wanted to cover it up. I, that's what I think it was. I think they didn't know what it was and they were trying to defuse the situation. To fucking, I think they didn't know what it was. I think they thought it was probably extraterrestrial. Let's go up there and draw some flares, and we'll tell them they saw that, and it'll fucking get it. Look over here. And then, and then afterwards, you'll be like, "Nah, you didn't see that. You, you can saw just flares. say it was you all flares. flares." You know. And the second time, like I said, it probably chill the was. fuck out. And then there's somebody in the intelligence agencies who are where they were like, "I wonder what that was." I think the aliens were watching us. They might be watching us. You know, it was some shit like that. The thing about it, I kind of feel like when you see a lot of these documentaries, because I watched one, another documentary called UFO Hunters, and uh, they were, uh, you know, they were kind of looking into this case as well. I feel like that's kind of the linchpin of a lot of these UFO advocate shows, let's call them that, Mm -hmm. is one of the things they're trying to debunk is that the second sighting was flares, so they'll try to like replicate it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So a lot of shows will have a thing where it's like, we replicated, didn't look anything like the fucking, so it must have been aliens. But like I said, it, they're confusing the issue, I think, too. Now, there's another dude, and this dude, um, they wrote about him on the Wikipedia page, but also he was in the, um, that that Lynn Katai, the mm-hmm. Lynn Katai documentary. This dude, he's like all, you know, gung-ho about UFOs. His name's uh, Jim Dill... Dilatoso? Dilatoso, mm. yeah. So one thing that he did, and this is, okay, so this is something I love about a lot of these people that are, and I'm like I said, I'm not saying the original sighting wasn't extraterrestrials. I don't know. I didn't see it. The second one was probably flares, so calm down. But this is one of my favorite things about anybody that believes in these sort of like paranormal kind of things. It's like they always kind of do this thing that to them seems scientific and I guess to other people sounds scientific but really if you think about it it's really not what they think it is you know what I'm saying this is kind of like a prime example of that so this dude said that he took the video footage of the second incident which was like I said that that most people understand was flares he wanted to prove that it wasn't flares so he took some of the photo images and the video images and he took them through um, a program called Image Pro Plus, and he tried to prove by making a histogram of, you know, the red, green, blue, 
you know, spectrum, like the light spectrum. Yeah. Um, he was trying to prove that that wasn't flares by comparing the RGB spectrum, you know, in the histogram for that one to ones of known flares. But he was kind of claiming that just by essentially, I guess, like eye dropping, you know, the, the color or whatever, like yeah. in the thing that he could determine what that light was made of. Uh, not buying. And well, yeah. And the thing, even the people that make the program are like, yeah, our shit can't do that. Right. Not buying well, it. well, because the thing about it is that one, when you take a photograph or a video of something, you are inherently changing the, you know, the light the the histogram you're changing like the light you know uh quality because Spectrum, yeah. yeah and and also when you do that you are not getting infrared you're not getting ultraviolet you're not getting other things like that that are going to you know feed into what your you know sp spectrum your spectral analysis is spectroscop spectroscopic because yeah, I can't analysis, say that fucking yeah. word. It's so, yeah, well, I, no, it's yeah. not even so much that. I've, I've only had, like, one drink, so okay. I just can't really say that word. All right. But, um, but so he tried to make it look like, you know, I did this, ana like, scientific analysis on these pictures, and it's not, you know, it's not the same as the light from a flare. But, as I said, I don't think that, I just, I don't think that you can get that just from photos or, you know what I mean? You're not getting a, a spectroscopic analysis of just from a picture. Well, he's talking about, he's talking about the video of the fucking, the famous flare video. Yeah. Yeah. He's no. trying to prove that it wasn't flares. No. Is basically not what he's trying to do. Yeah. No. And it's like, if you think about it for five minutes, it's just the like. The cameras not... aren't, the cameras aren't sensitive enough and accurate enough to give you what the exact spectrum was to begin with anyway, because. That's yeah. what I'm saying. You so it's to, already one it's thing already, removed yeah, from reality. From reality. So and can't. there's and cameras and stuff only capture like a small portion right. of the visible light spectrum, right. you know. And you need like other, you need parts of the invisible spectrum to get an actual like spectroscopic analysis of what that is. Right. What the and, light is comprised of, and, and, and you can't thinking, do that. From, I'm thinking from an old VHS fucking. VHS yeah, this was 1997. It's cheap fucking. Even cheap nowadays, shit. it wouldn't work. Mm -hmm. But like, you know, back then it really wouldn't have worked because a lot of the, you know, a lot of the photos and videos of it are like really kind of shitty quality. I think it was flares. You can't see the smoke trail above the flares, but that might have been because the resolution was so low. That's all I'm going to say about that. It looked like flares, improper deployment of flares as a diversion to say, no, you saw flares. I don't know why you would fucking drop a fucking illumination flare that fucking high. Yeah. It was just to, to deceive people. They didn't know what it was. Something flew over and they were trying to calm people down. And then they would buy them time to do an investigation. I don't think they knew what it was. I don't think they ever found out what it was. And they were saying, too, that when they analyzed, you know, like, um, you know, the weather conditions that night, shit like that. And they said, you know, the way the wind was blowing, the way people reported the second incident, um, you know, it looked pretty much like somebody had just dropped some shit out of a plane, and like that, flares or something, and that was the way that the wind was going. It wasn't... Another real suspicious thing about this is that the craft, I'm going to call it a craft, it flew right over a fucking Air Force base. And now the Air Force base was not active at that time. No flights were going out of it. it flew right over the Air Force base, and they denied... See, they, did, they said they didn't see it. They denied knowing anything about it. I'm just not going to buy it. I don't buy it. We didn't see that. Yeah. <laughs> I don't buy it. Yeah. You'd think that, you know, maybe maybe it's radar resistant. I don't know. But uh, everybody else could see it. Yeah. You would think the Air Force would know what was going on in the sky, wouldn't you? I mean, you would hope so. Yeah. That's the thing. It's like when they deny it. It could mean that they know exactly what it is, but they don't want you to know. Yeah. Or it could mean that they have no idea what it is, and they don't want you to know that they don't know. And then I also remember that one of the, the 911 dispatcher called the damn Air Force. They called the Air Force um, um, airport and asked them if they had anything flying. They went, no, they didn't have anything flying. So they were aware that people were seeing stuff. Yeah. They just didn't want to admit it. Yeah, so like I said, that could totally go either way. Yeah. It could be extraterrestrial or it could be like some weird yeah. shit they came up with and they just don't want anybody to know about it. Because yeah. like no one's supposed to know about it. I got a feeling they didn't do anything. I, don't, I got a feeling they didn't know what it was. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Now, interestingly, like I said, so so the second event 
Um, probably flares. Um, the first event still kind of unexplained, although, and this is actually the first time that I had learned this. Apparently there's a reporter named Janet Gonzalez and she had seen videotape of the original incident because like I said, there was actually kind of a shitty video of that. And after analysis of that, um, allegedly it might be that the lights people saw, the five or six lights that people saw were actually not part of one craft, but were five, what were separate. Yeah. Now guys in hang gliders with lights. Maybe well, no planes. Right? planes. Interestingly, right. there is this one guy, he's uh, an amateur astronomer named Mitch Stanley. And he was looking through his telescope that night. Like I said, there was like some kind of like, I can't remember what it was, but I think it was like a meteor shower. So there were a lot of people like, you know, watching this guy that night. Now he was looking through his telescope that night. It was 43 times magnification. And he saw the original lights, apparently, um, he reported later. He saw the original lights, but he didn't think they were unusual. Hmm. Like he told his mom at the time, oh, it's planes, that they were planes flying in formation. Yeah. It could be that people were just seeing them and... There's kind of a thing where if you see a couple, like a bunch of things like grouped together, like to kind of group them into one big thing. And they're like, so maybe people were just like seeing it from farther away than they, than they thought. And so they just kind of grouped it into one thing, even though it was five separate things. I think he's confused. I don't know. I'm just saying that this guy came forward and he was talking to like a newspaper reporter and he said, I saw the shit through my telescope and it was very clearly plain. R reports came into 911 dispatchers across several states in an organized fashion. You couldn't, so there, there, it would have had to have been planes flying together and people would have had to have buy, bought into it that it was one thing. I don't believe so. <clears throat> Too many people saw it fucking low and said, no, it was like a carpenter square. It was a triangle. Like yeah. A, you know, it was like a carpenter square. That's what I think it probably was. I mean, like I said, the second, it seems like the second event is pretty well. Five Simons in the fucking governor. Let's kind of talk about that a little bit. He saw it and says, yeah, yeah. But the thing about this. He so, didn't admit to it right away. Fife Symington yeah. Yeah. was the governor of Arizona at the time. Yeah. And, uh, or the governor of, yeah. Right? Yeah. Governor of yeah. the state. I, for a second, I was like, got governor and mayor confused. Because, you know, that's, that's how it happens when you get old. Uh, you, you forget what words mean but th there's a very famous video of him and he comes out doing a press conference and he's being super super serious and he's like yeah we're, we've been looking into this like ufo shit or whatever and he's like we found the person responsible he says didn't he say something like that we found the person responsible and then he had his fucking one of his uh you know his, they, his aide or his secretary yeah. or whatever comes out in an alien suit yeah and all of the reporters off. well all the reporters kind of like laughed but then it was just kind of like you know so he was just like making a joke about it all the witnesses were fucking pissed well i could yeah. imagine because it's like if you saw something i don't know if you saw something like that and then suddenly everyone was just like making fun of you yeah that would be a, that'd be a bummer yeah um i've never seen a ufo like i don't know so i don't know but so, yeah, so a lot of people were really mad that he wasn't taking it seriously. And then the whole kicker of the shit was that, you know, that was not too long after the original sighting, right? But then, like, ten years later, he comes forward and says, yeah, I saw that shit, too. Yeah. And he was, he like, said, all taking it seriously and shit like that then. He said he said he wanted to kind of, like, he said that people weren't in damn near panic. You know, people in that area were fucking panicked. And that uh, he wanted to kind of lighten the lighten the mood and kind of say look we don't know what it was you know um he he didn't say it didn't happen he said we don't know what it was basically well you that's know. kind of like the safest answer yeah now later on he said that he saw it from a distance and that it was a fucking big black fucking craft like a like a carpenter square with lights on it and um guy pressed it what well, was some kind of secret craft right you know and which that right there, fucking, you can find the interview where on YouTube of him being interviewed by this fucking total chucklehead. <laughs> Simonton's trying to tell him that no, this is a fucking extraterrestrial craft, and the other guy keeps pushing him into trying to say that it was a secret aircraft. 
And he was just like, uh, no, 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 you know. That was a fucking alien craft. That's like what yeah, I mean, Simon basically, was trying to say. You know? I have some of his quotes here. Yeah. He says, I'm a pilot, yeah. and I know just about every machine that flies. Yeah. It was bigger than anything I've ever seen. Yeah. Um, it remains a great mystery. Other people saw it, responsible people. I don't know why people would ridicule it. Um, and then he says, it was enormous and inexplicable. Who knows where it came from? A lot of people saw it, and I saw it too. Yeah. It was dramatic, and it couldn't have been flares because it was too symmetrical. It had a geometric outline, a constant shape. Yeah. And he said, I can definitively say this craft did not resemble any man-made object that I've ever seen. It was certainly not high... Oh, shit. Okay, it says it reconnected soon. Did it okay. reconnect? Yeah. It's okay, we're back. All right. Okay. I've never had that happen before. Weird. That is very weird. Yeah. Um. There was also a councilwoman Frances Barwood and this was kind of like she was she's been on a lot of the um the documentaries about this so apparently she was one of the kind of like adv I don't remember if she saw it personally or not but she really wanted to um kind of launch an investigation into it because she was like taking it seriously and stuff and one of the things that the, I don't know why this stuck out to me but they said this in the documentary they said when she got like real serious about it and she interviewed like 700 witnesses who had seen it and all this other kind of stuff. She said other people in her office or whatever started making jokes about it. Like they pr had business cards printed with her name on it, but there was like no phone number. And it, underneath it said something like, just speak to the tinfoil. I'll hear you. Or yeah. something. And I was like, that's super mean. But also that's pretty funny. I got to admit <laughs> That was actually, I was like, it's kind of terrible, but also kind of funny. Because, I mean, that was a good one. That was a good one. Speak into the tinfoil, I'll hear you. I think that's what it said on, her, on the business card that they made for her. Well, because, and like I said, she's been interviewed on a lot of the shit. And she, I don't know if she actually thinks it's extraterrestrials, but she just wants to know what it is. And she thinks it's shitty that um, everyone's just trying to kind of say that these people didn't say didn't see what they said they saw right and like i said it's just i don't know it, it just confounds the issue because so many people like conflate it with oh it was flares but that wasn't what the original people reported that happened later you know what i mean so and like i said i don't know you know i we've talked about this before this is why we don't do a lot of ufo shows but do I believe that there are that there is intelligent life elsewhere in the universe? Yes. Um, it would be dumb to think that there wasn't because the universe is fucking vast. So there's probably some more shit like us out there somewhere uh, or much smarter than us, hopefully. Um, do they come here? That's a different question. Um, and I'm not really sure. I'm not really sure. It's like uh, the most I will give it, it's like, do they come here and like kind of like drop in and be like, hey, what are y'all up to or whatever, or send a drone or something like that to just check on us. Um, I can go that far. I don't, these people that are like, oh, I got abducted and probed and all that other kid. Yeah, yeah no, no. It's, it, or I got impregnated by aliens. Yeah, no, you didn't. Um, that's, that's some other issues that you have going on. Um, but it's just it's a complicated thing because like i said saying that there's intelligent life elsewhere in the universe is a completely different thing than saying that they come here and fuck with us do i think they come here and fuck with us no but have they kind of like cruised by and like kind of looked out looked down there maybe maybe there's been in recent history recent human history Actually, there's some stuff that goes back to the 1800s over San Francisco that's kind of questionable. That kind of resembles this site. But the thing is, is that newspapers in the 1800s lied. I mean, they openly lied about a lot of shit. But there were some weird reports over San Francisco of fucking a huge dirigible, huge craft with lights on it. I remember those. Yeah. And then it just went away. You know. Could be... What we know now, you know, they're fucking finding all these fucking planetary surveys. They're putting up new sensors and new equipment because it's easy to get into fucking orbit now. Soon we'll know. Uh, but we do know this. Earth-like planets 
are pretty common. Uh, a lot more common than we thought. Uh, they're not going to be near us, but it, anything that would come here would be millions of years ahead of us, not hundreds, not thousands. Yeah, it would have to be like millions, way ahead. Right. Because that's like some massive distance yeah. you have to traverse. Right. Which goes that that. So I'm going to go ahead and say if they can traverse that distance, they're not biological. Which Arthur C. Clarke and some of the best scientists of fucking all times have said that. It said that no. Alien life that would come here that would be fucking interstellar probably wouldn't be biological. Because it's just too much of a fucking weakness. Biology doesn't last that long. You die too soon. It wouldn't mean anything to a fucking... I don't want to say artificial intelligence, but just like a computer intelligence. It would be nothing for them to go to sleep for a million years. Just nothing. They don't care about time. They don't age. Yeah. So, so that means they wouldn't have to go fast. But they maybe they could go, maybe they do go fast, though. Well, maybe they have, like, wormhole shit. Maybe they have wormhole or fucking warp-type technology that you saw in Star Trek. They might have that. But when you're talking about these gigantic craft like this, I got a suspicion that, it's, that that's not biological. That craft is the creature. That's what I think it is. You know? That's not a ship with a bunch of people in it, like a flying city. I think that's it. That's the creature. It's basically the damn monolith out of 2001. And it yeah. Goes by, yeah. You know what I mean? Because I think people really have a thing that it's like, oh, that was a ship, and there's like a lot Little of people in alien it. tourists like looking out looking the window. like the tour bus, you know yeah, what I mean? We're dropping a, by Earth to like check out the fucking Yeah, the that's humans. a very provincial fucking thinking. I mean, when you look in the eight, look at back in the 1800s of what scientists thought was happening on Mars, you got Martian people running around with fucking mini legs and umbrellas and dressed like with top hats on. You know what I mean? They have Victorian, top hats on Mars, yeah. You know, and that they're dealing with Victorian fucking, you know, Victorian fucking um, problems and shit. No. <laughs> no. That wasn't on Mars. But they thought there was life on Mars. <laughs> And they they wearing... thought there was life on the moon not yeah. that long ago. Yeah, and it and that the, that they wore top hats and had parasols and shit, <laughs> just like us. Yeah, just yeah, like yeah. Us. They were drinking tea, <laughs> Martian tea. So well, because of course, if they were Martians, they must be like all refined, mm -hmm. and they so they must be like us because yeah, they we're awesome. Tea. Yeah. So obviously they have the same awesomeness qualities They're that we have. They're making aqueducts and shit. No. <laughs> Well, I think fucking um, Arthur C. Clarke and some of the other scientists are more likely that no, that biological creatures create artificial intelligence that becomes sentient and becomes the next step in the evolution of life. And then computers and computer intelligences take over. And they're more intelligent than us, immortal, and are aware. And they are alive, but they don't age. They're immortal. They're like the gods. And uh, they don't worry about shit like money and economies and all these fucking crazy shit that humans are worried about and political issues. That sounds nice. Worried about what gender you are and shit. They don't give a fuck about that, man. They're just, they're, they're machine intelligences. And they just kind of make themselves into a, these gigantic fucking interstellar craft. And then, then, then they're living inside of an internet hooked up with each other in these craft. And so their intelligences can be anywhere in the world. They're fucking alien souls. 